Hey, it's Sizzling Popcorn. This week we have a jam-packed update with tons of news from various developers, including Orbix, India Fox Teco, INI Builds, F Sim Studios, and much more. Let's get started with the new products added to the marketplace for PC and Xbox. This week, 27 new products were added to the marketplace, 12 on PC, 15 on Xbox. Just like in the previous week, there are a lot of Night Enhancement DLCs from Dream Scenery that takes up most of the spots. There's 10 of them. Because they've released for both PC and Xbox, that means 20 of the 27 new products this week are just from Dream Scenery. Wow. I think we've got some more important news than that, but let's go through this quickly before we go on to the juicier news. By the way, I am using the Sim Update 8 beta, which has a new layout for the marketplace. In addition, you can find marketplace items as offers right from the world map. Even though it's a great feature, I wouldn't recommend buying anything from the in-game marketplace unless you're forced to, like Xbox users, or if items are only available in-game, such as Carinado's aircrafts. As you can see here, we've got Nashville, Marco Island, El Paso, Marseille, and Des Moines, all from Dream Scenery, and these are all night enhancements. They all have like five out of five ratings, but it's like one or two. It's probably like the developer and, a, and their friends or something, but who knows? Uh, but the main one here would be from LLH Creation, Kalmar Husen Airport. So that, uh, right now there's like five ratings. That is just on uh, PC. It could come out for Xbox at a later time. If we then scroll down, we then have Newark in Jersey Night Enhancement, Constance, Louisville, Belfeld, and North Carolina, all again from Dream Scenery. And you can see that there's only one of them that's not a five out of five, and it's because it's got more than one rating. But uh, again, take that with a grain of salt. All of these uh, Dream Sceneries, both available on PC and Xbox. But the main one here would be MXI Design. They have uh, Milus Bodrum Airport. This is for PC only at the moment. There's only one rating. Again, take that with a grain of salt. Well, that wraps it up for the PC side of things. Xbox, there is Busan City WoW from Sansine 3D. This came out for PC not too long ago on the marketplace. You also have Pyongyang Sunan International from Sansine 3D. Same thing. Then you've got F Sim Studios Kelowna International. It's now making it available for both PC and Xbox. This I do have on PC. I'll put a link to a video in the show notes below. Then you got Macro Simulations Birmingham International. And last but not least, RC Studio with Luca Tassignano Airport. So that wraps it up for the marketplace. Now let's move on to some juicier news. We got tons of it. Sim Update 8 Beta has been released and there's a ton of new features and bug fixes. You can check out the full list and join the beta by checking Microsoft's blog post from February 10th. Just a couple of items to talk about is that the Reno Air Races now has a private lobby option so that you can race against your friends, and settings have been added for the Tobii Tracker 5, including 6 degrees of freedom support, which I'll make a separate video for. Although there's bug fixes, CTDs still happen. I personally think that in 2027, we'll still be talking about CTDs. Will there be less of them? For sure. It's sort of like what we're dealing with in the world today. We just have to learn to live with it. Earlier in the week, Ubed at INI Builds teased that this month would be a great month for Microsoft Flight Simulator flyers before sharing a couple of images of an A310. He did confirm that it will not be releasing this month. In addition, the company released a preview of their Heathrow Airport DLC, which should be releasing soon. Next up, Anna at Orbix unveiled their 2022 roadmap. There's some pretty exciting stuff in the pipeline. Prague is the first airport for the year, which I released my review of it over the weekend. As always, check the show notes below for links to more information and visuals. They do have Landmark's Panama Canal, which is soon to be completed with some special features. Updates to the New Zealand mesh with high resolution LiDAR data up to one meter in selected areas. And Landmark's Auckland will also receive an update. A bunch of aircraft to be named later. Melbourne's main airport and a Melbourne city pack. Chuck Yeager, Fresno, Palm Beach, 
Phuket, Boise, and Great Britain North Landmarks Pack. From their independent developers, Marcus Nyberg with Stockholm Arlanda, Finn Hansen with Oslo, Andreas Hege with Bolzano, Rasha Tukakov with Podgorica in the Balkan Peninsula, Matteo Veneziani will be revisiting Burbank, which was one of the first airports to arrive to Microsoft Flight Simulator. He'll be making a new version with reworked models and textures and new ground poly. After that, he'll be working on the Gold Coast and Treviso. Ken Hall with Launceston, Australia. Tim Harris with Invercargill in New Zealand. And sorry if I butchered these names, but it's names that I'm not familiar with. And last but not least, Dmitro Rikunov, who's working on the update for the New Zealand mesh, will then work on South America. And yes, Anna confirmed that it will be the whole continent. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this will look like. SimWorks Studios, who've recently released the Kodiak 100, announced that they've partnered with pilots to develop the Dash 7, which is a turboprop regional airliner known for its stall performance and ruggedness. Stall meaning short takeoff and landing. On Pilot's Facebook page, they confirmed that their Boeing 314 should release before the Dash 7. India Fox Tech will have announced their 2022 roadmap. First of all, they're currently working on bug fixes and improvements on their recently released F-35 Lightning II. The Sukhoi Su-31 is on short final and is expected to release in March. The Aramachi M346 can be expected no sooner than April. A new Eurofighter Typhoon project that won't be a P3D version, but completely built from scratch. This is not expected to be done before the fall. Then they have an experimental project, the F-14D Super Tomcat, which they call a technology test bench to try and test new techniques and capabilities in the sim. The project is using an extremely high detailed mesh, about 1.3 polygons, which at the moment is not yielding great FPS on most systems. Other projects that they're working on without any timelines include an MB-326, an M-345, a TA-4A4 Skyhawk, a Mini-500 helicopter, an E-2C Hawkeye, and a C-27J Spartan. For more information, check out India Fox Techo's Facebook page. Aerosoft, who are currently working on the A330, are asking the community for input into what they develop next. Mathij stated that the A350 is not viable due to the lack of data access. He also said that the A380 is off the table because commercially it is about as interesting to us as it is for airlines. So go check out their forums and add your input. I'll link the post in the show notes below. We talked about a lot of projects and developments up to now and we still got more to talk about. Let me know in the comment section below. Which item are you looking forward to the most and want more updates on? Saturday, Robert Randazzo at PMDG announced that the 737 is now in the hands of beta testers. All feedback will be embargoed for a few builds before laying them loose to share their thoughts with the public. Robert said that we should get some performance numbers from the beta testers soon and that he might have time this week to make a video. After releasing their pricing for the Concorde, DC Designs teased a release date in March next month, but with no specific date. FSIM Studios announced their top secret project is Toronto City Billy Bishop Airport. This rendition of their airport will be ultra detailed and part of their new premium line of airports. It will be releasing within the next two weeks. Over half the buildings will have detailed interiors modeled. The DLC will include landmarks beyond the airport, which includes downtown Toronto. On release, there will be a few landmarks, but then on every update afterwards, more will be added. Lead developer Gabriel announced in their Discord that their second premium airport will be Calgary, which is currently being worked on and will have detailed interiors and landmarks in downtown Calgary. The third premium airport for the year will be Victoria International with Victoria Harbour. This is in collaboration with Canada for XP and Canadian Flight Sim Studios. To cap this update, we'll talk about two separate projects of the same aircraft that will be key to airline operations in Toronto City Centre. The Dash 8 Q400. 
One is from a freeware project by Breeze Development, who recently opened up a Discord server. I shared some images in last week's update video. They've released a few more images just before I produced this video, this time revealing some of the modeling in the cockpit. The dev has stated that it's still a long way to go. The other project is Payware and from a developer well known in the flight sim community. Majestic, who've just released an update for their FSX and P3D customers, was asked about the Q400 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. The dev, who's been silent about the sim, confirmed that work is being done, but it'll be a while before he has anything to show. The Q400 for Microsoft Flight Simulator will get there at some point in time. Again, lots of meat to chew on in this week's update. If you haven't already, let me know in the comment section below which project are you most looking forward to. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching and happy flying.